Greetings. It's great to be with you again. I'm George Parrott here with Dr. Nancy Daniel. Hi, everybody. Uh, what a, a intense time we're in. You know, we need to take uh, precautions as our governments and healthcare officials recommend. But it's also a time to just rest in knowing the Lord and keeping our eyes on Him. You know, He's not sitting in heaven wringing His hands or worried about anything. And we're to be anxious for nothing, but in all our ways, acknowledge Him. So, Nancy, what's been happening? Well, I tell you, we've been hearing uh, people are buying up the toilet paper. And Again? Re, uh, you know, and so, uh, we. and I don't know if you saw this on Facebook, George, but they were saying that if you bought 30 rolls of toilet paper, you owe the church, what, three? Three rolls. Three rolls. So, if anybody's out there and you got too <laughs> many rolls of toilet paper and you really stand guilty, you need to start tithing to, how about CMM? Yes. Your toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> we'll use it eventually. <laughs> No, it's true, right? What my wife and I have been trying to do when we go shopping is buy a few extra things. That way, if some of our neighbors or friends, and particularly our staff who live by faith, that we can help <clears throat> provide for them. So I'm sure many of you are already doing that. But yeah. pray about that. If When you do get supplies or you find things, buy a little bit extra if you can and give it away to somebody or have it on hand to be ready to give away. Uh, we don't know how long this will, will go on. We pray it soon. Um, many uh, voices are saying, you know, it could be over around Passover, which is April 9th. But let's pray for just remarkable American innovation to come up with things. I saw in the news yesterday and today the, the president uh, speaking about the possibility of malaria pills, chloroquinone, I think it is. It's been around for years and they're good, they've been testing it. And it seems to have some effect. And also we recommend plain old vitamin C. Vitamin C. Vitamin yeah. C has been shown by many people in many nations that it can be an effective preventive measure to avoid getting the coronavirus. So we just say, no, in the name of Jesus, no plague shall come upon our house. Even this morning, I read Psalm 91 out loud to myself of just declaring that into the air those powerful words of who God is for us. And we need to, to block out too much media attention. We need to stay informed, but also be in God's word more and more because that's the yeah. truly good news that's eternal. And we stand on those promises for our families, for our homes, our churches, our ministries, and our friends and our neighbors too. It's a great time. Every night, you know, I see like kids out on our street like a block party. Like the old, old times, And, and right? they're playing basketball <laughs> and talking with each other and the, the parents are speaking to each other. So that part is really good, although we do need to remember to take precautions that are advised as far as space density yeah, we're, like we're, that. Yeah, we're at that space. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but you know, you know what, George, the Lord has been telling me today, um, and this is something very simple, and by the way, this is not profound, so just buckle your seatbelt. This mm -hmm. is not profound. This is what you already know, but this is what he's been saying to me. Mm -hmm. He's been saying to me, fill the airwaves with truth and light and yes. life Ooh, that's and good. so you know we keep everybody keeps talking that this is the year of the mouth or the pay and um i think it was one of my students was talking maybe it was wendy conrad i'm not sure i'm going to share a scripture that she gave later but talked about the attack on the respiratory system mm -hmm. and we're supposed to cover our mouths because the enemy's trying to stop us from declaring and speaking right. and then all the media hype that's going on right now um you know it is a reality okay it's a reality mm. but there's a truth yes. and so you know what the lord is asking us to do is go to him and begin to speak the truth so what is the truth that he's telling us and so uh, we can agree with the experts right mm -hmm. And we can say, well, they're going to say August and, you know, we don't know and it could happen again and it looks so dark. And, and we can, it's it's good to understand what the reality is. It's like having to be sick or it's like having something wrong and the Lord gives you a different vision. And then what do you do? You Do you agree with the reality or do you agree with what he's telling you? Right. So what to, to agree with, we've been talking about faith for mm -hmm. some time now, right? Right, for years. Yeah, but I mean, no, in our conversations, mm -hmm. right? So to, to be to be saying what God says is, okay, I recognize the reality of what experts are saying, but Lord, you're saying this, I'm going to write it, I'm gonna bring it into reality by speaking it, and I'm gonna fill the airwaves with hope, yes, and with life, and with truth of God. 
It is a time of real testing. And what but, you were speaking about, Nancy, reminds me of our friend uh, Kevin Zadai that said there's, there's the truth and there are facts. So we're inundated with the facts of this virus reality. and the reality of what's yeah. happening around us. But then we can stand with the and T. look to the truth, yeah. the truth giver, our Lord God Almighty, and look in his word of what he says is the truth. Well, and, and then what he tells us. And so what he's been telling us through <clears throat> the prophets and through everything is that this is the year of the mouth. That means to declare a thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, Romans 10, 10 says, you know, that, uh, you know, that we, we, we're, we have salvation. We, we yes. declare by, we have the salvation as we declare it. And so what does that mean? That means salvation is healing, wholeness, deliverance, all of it. Really? Right? It's salvation. Uh, um, um, uh, it's, that, that's really what we need. Right. And that is Yeshua. That's yes, Jesus. that's Yeshua. So, so that is what we need to be starting to, to um, sync with heaven in those things. So, you know, what life-giving thing has he shown you today, George? Really? Well, as you were speaking, <clears throat> it reminds me of uh, Job twenty-two twenty-eight. Declare a thing, right. and it shall be established unto you. That there's, you know, we read in the book of James about the power of life and death is in the tongue. Right. And that we can speak life over our family. We can speak the several scriptures that say, no plague shall come upon our house. And we can rest in his presence. I've uh, we, we've been... Uh, talking with friends and seriously considering, you know, I need to keep in touch for benefit of our missionaries around the world and the friends and students <clears throat> uh, to be able to communicate in a, in a responsive way with them and give encouragement and keep up with the news media of what's going on to a point. But I'm seriously praying about fasting media more yeah. during this time because it can just be um, overwhelming in the time it takes. We have things to do, you know. I'm working on a, on a book. We have regular communications going on. We're just sending aid into Pakistan to drill another well. We're working on sending aid to Italy and Israel. That mm -hmm. We have friends and families and churches in these really troubled spots that are asking for help, praying for help. And I'll be speaking about that in another video. But uh, there's a lot of uh, things that we can be doing that reflect faith in God, trust in God, right. rest in God during this time. We need to follow the advice of, of the experts and the government and the healthcare officials, but also we need to, to be about the Father's business. Right. It's a great opportunity to witness to neighbors out on the street. Spring is coming, the weather's nice here in Charlotte area, but to, to be engaged or to, to spend more time calling up friends and family Talk with them on the phone, encourage them, pray together. But you know, you were, you were talking about the media. Um, Lou Engel just recently had a fast, and this is the end of that. And the Lord had me fast too much media because I was kind of getting into that more and more. And um, what that has done is by turning that off and just focusing, what that does is that bring, brings a calm and more of a peace into your home. And I think there's been such a swirl uh, that's been released, that the enemy is trying to get everybody into a swirl and a panic and a fear, as opposed to, oh, but they said this, but they said that, but what, and the Lord keeps saying to me, but what am I saying, okay? And so when you say the Word of God, as we're reading the Word of God, the Holy Spirit illumines that to us. Mm -hmm. And when He illumines that to us, that's what we begin to declare over our lives and our family. It, it takes us to be desperate. Has anybody ever struggled for a healing or a miracle in some way? Yes, you guys all have. And as you're pressing in, it's that desperation of where you press into the heart of the Father that you begin to see that thing because you begin to partner with heaven to bring it to life. And that again is with your mouth and the declaration. Yes. And so I think I think to stop the swirl, we can, This you're, you're finding the lemons uh, you're finding lemonade in the in the lemons when we're able to be with people and do the things we're called to do, which is so important, George. Yes. But that part where God is looking for that people who will partner with him mm -hmm. and declare what he's saying right now is so important. It is. I found a great scripture this morning as I was reading Psalm 91. From the Passion Translation. I think we need to memorize that. We do. And make do. that a breath prayer. Yes, this you know? uh, that I'm going to read is from the Passion Translation. Okay. Verse 14. Uh, For here is what the Lord has spoken to me. Because you have delighted in me as my great lover, I will greatly protect you. 
I will set you in a high place, safe and secure before my face. And so because we have delighted in him, Amen. he watches over us. He puts his, his protective wings. He sends his angelic army to watch over us. So this is a, an ideal time, a, a time of um, in desperation to hunger and thirst for yeah. more of the Lord, for hungering in a desperate way for his presence in your life. And he says, because you have delighted in me as my great lover, I will greatly protect you and I will set you in a high place, safe and secure before my face. That's powerful. And so encouraging. Yeah, that's powerful. And so that really spoke to you because you were meditating on that. You didn't just go in there and pick a scripture out, but the Lord highlighted it. And I want to I want to encourage everybody, um, you know, sometimes we'll go in and pick something out and start declaring stuff just because. And But it's really good to have a Holy Spirit illumine that. Mm -hmm. And um, speaking of that, um, because that that is powerful. And on that note... I've got one too. Mm -hmm. um, the Lord was just spoke to me out of the blue and he said, Nancy, and I've said this before, what if my glory mm -hmm. is protection Amen. enough? And I just didn't, I, I was sharing that. And, I, and it again, Wendy Conrad, God bless her, and, and Master 2, power, powerhouse, mighty warrior of God, gave me the scripture. God was speaking to her. And then it really, really resonated, George, with me. And this is Psalm 3, 3 to 5 in the Passion. And it says, but in the depths of my heart, so this goes with what you're saying, mm -hmm. I truly know that you, Yahweh, have become my shield. Um, and it says, you take me and surround me with yourself. And in the Passion, those notes say, many translations render this, you are a shield around me. The ancient Hebrew can be translated, you, O Lord, are my taker. That's from Augustine. The implication is that God shields us by taking us into himself wow. because we're seated in Christ. Jesus Christ is the taker of humanity, the one who was made flesh. He's not only our nature, took our nature, he also took our sins that he might take us into glory. So with that, your glory covers me continually. All right, this is the glory and his glory. You lift high my head when I bow down low in shame. I have cried out to you, Yahweh, from your holy presence. You send me a father's help and says, pause in his presence. So this is where, this is where we, we call upon the Lord, like you're talking about, mm -hmm. and where he surrounds us with his presence because he's taken us into himself and he surrounds us with that glory. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, this, this is really where he's calling the body to. Mm -hmm. So we're going to see as we begin to focus on him and you're like, like in, in, um, in um, 90, uh, Psalm 91 mm -hmm. and Psalm 3, as we're focusing on him, we are going to go as a body into that oneness, that place more with him to see those things uh, really explode in the world. Yes. And it's going to change the thing, don't you think? It does. It's exciting. It's already changing things. And there's so many... He keeps showing me every day so many opportunities. You know, it's like he hit the pause button on planet Earth. Many uh, countries are brought to a standstill at this time. Economies are, are suffering, being shaken. One of my uh, sons told me yesterday that China has already lost one year of gross domestic product output. That's billions and trillion, maybe trillion dollars, but billions and billions that China has lost. America is heading towards this. But though there's all this shaking around us, you know, we're standing in a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And we can just press in to the heart of God even more <coughs> with this trust, with surrender, yielding, aligning ourselves with him, and just bowing down in humility, of saying, oh God, you have to watch over my family. I'm dependent on, on you, Lord, I worship you. I exalt you, That's Father. Right. You are the reason <coughs> I live. And if you weren't in my life, there's no point in living. He's our all in all. He's our everything. And he's giving each of you a kiss right now. I just see in the spirit that how much he loves you. He's comforting. He says his Holy Spirit around in each of those who have given their hearts to the Lord and invited the Holy Spirit to come in. And I pray you just receive his perfect and pure love that he has for you. You know, George, that is, that's powerful. And I, I'm thinking about the provision right now because this is very scary for a lot of people mm -hmm. and that our creature comforts are kind of right now um, on hold 
And so um, that is difficult. And I know, um, you know, several have, have talked about that and the unknowing of what, but you know what? I feel like the Lord says, do not worry about that. Right. And we, and I just pray that you would hear that gentle voice say, do not worry and know. So I prayed, I prayed with a student yes. and um, they were asking for, they, they were looking for a product. And um, uh, so it was really amazing. They were really worried and under stress. And so as I prayed with them, uh, they went to the store and um, it was really funny. I said, did you get that product? And uh, they said, he was, the, the Lord was sneaky. I said, what happened? She said, he hid it and I found one left. Uh -huh. And so this was something very special, but we prayed. And so the thing is, you know, don't be surprised when things are multiplied when God makes a provision you never intended, or he shows you another way around it. The point is, what we're supposed to do right now is look to the Lord, and he's going to show us how to, to do this, and mm -hmm. then how to be able to share with others. And I feel like it's not going to be like we think. Right. Right. And so this is where we begin to declare the thing. I remember Graham Cook talked about not having food for a time. Mm -hmm. And um, he he just his child came in. I, it was an old tape long time ago. He, he said, uh, you know, Dad, what do we do? Father, what do we do? We don't have any cereal. And he said, well, you know, it'll come. And so in the middle of the night, the, the boy was hitting him on the head with the box of cereal. Mm -hmm. Other times they had other miracles. And so. These are the things, I think, that as we agree with heaven and begin to declare what God is saying, I think we don't have to fear. Right. This is where we can have the faith. So this is, so George, continuing on that idea of the mouth, mm -hmm. the prayer, or speaking and declaring, um, I don't know, is God showing you anything? Oh, yes, about... What, what are you declaring? Reminding me to always be thankful. Okay, that's You know, we good. have so much to be thankful in, in our my life yes. and my family's life, in the ministry of CMM, our staff and our friends and families that volunteer their time so sacrificially, and to be thankful and to be thanking the Lord, you know, That's to turn good. every idle thought or really fear good. of doubt or yeah. unbelief into intercession and thanksgiving. That right. The Word says that we enter His courts with praise on our lips and thanksgiving in our heart. And I've shared with several friends almost daily, you know, people um, panicking about toilet paper. <laughs> and whenever that comes up, I'm always reminded of like, we know many people in many nations that have never had toilet paper. That's right. We have so much to, to be thankful for. I know when I first got into missions after many decades <clears throat> in my adult life in business and marketplace, and I'd go to other countries, and there'd be such joy and dire poverty. Mm -hmm. I thought I knew about happiness before, <laughs> and I knew that I was saved before I went on my first mission trip. But then it really started to radiate as, as uh, the salvation experience transformed me of how blessed we are in America. And coming home the first few trips, going through American airports, and it was like, everyone's having a bad day. <laughs> it's like, have we forgotten the basics? <laughs> right. So this is a season <laughs> right. where neighbors are actually getting to know each other That's right. again and to be thankful for so many um, things we take for granted. You know, when our luxuries become necessities, we've gotten off track. That's bad. And you look yeah. at back throughout um, history, the Bible times of what was going on, of the, the turmoil and the strife and the war, the slavery that many lived through. Look at Daniel, look at Joseph, many that were sold into slavery or placed in slavery. But even then, they served their masters in an obedient way, and God used them. You look at so many examples of the um, importance of character in people's right. life. And this is a time of uh, testing of our character, our integrity, mm. our our love, and our loyalty and allegiance to the Lord himself. Right. There are many scriptures that talk about allegiance to the Lord. And this is a time when the enemy wants to highlight the negative things, but the Lord is wanting us to remember he's the highlighter. That's right. And to <clears throat> differentiate the truth from the facts that are around us and the truth that he gives us and that he is the and truth. And then to speak it. And speak you know, it. okay, so as we're filling the airwaves with grateful heart, 
I mean, we just need to fill, because the airwaves, the Lord was telling me today that the airwaves are being filled with negativity and mm -hmm. the body of Christ, some of the body is agreeing with that. Mm -hmm. And that we need to begin to speak life and hope and thankfulness. Yeah, that's a great one. Mm -hmm. um, you know, to, in everyday life, you know, we, we have some food, we have some water, we have each other, and this is a time to be grateful for those things. Whatever has happened in the old season was amazing, but you know what? Who our God is, whatever's going to happen in this next season is going to be equally as amazing, if not better. Yes. Because we're, and we need to be thankful for that, like everyday sunshine, springtime, you know, and the fact that we are, uh, that we're alive, that we get to share it with each other. Mm -hmm. And so begin to, we, I want to encourage everybody strongly to begin to declare life every day and thankful for uh, the birds that are singing in the morning, mm -hmm. thankful for uh, being able to speak to neighbors, thankful for uh, any food that we get and the, and the toilet paper that we've got, you know, and I, um, I do want to say, I feel like I feel like that humanity is doing, well, the body of Christ. I feel like the body of Christ is doing a good job mm -hmm. so far from things that we're hearing. I would give them, George, would you give them a 10? I'll give them a 10. We give you a 10 <laughs> we give also. You a 10. You're amazing people, as our, our president <laughs> says, and we give you a 10. Yeah, because I think they're all they're all laboring to try to, to get in and figure it out. Um, and so we, we do want to encourage you guys just to not lose your joy or your peace because that's the kingdom, right? Yes. So the, and how do we do that? Like you said, it's the thankful heart. It's the declaring what God's saying to turn and shift the thing. So as we are agreeing with heaven and agreeing with each other, the ecclesia, mm -hmm. the power, the, uh, uh, the, the ruling and reigning function of the body of Christ, all in unity, mm -hmm. agreeing with heaven, this can turn the thing. Really, and we're seeing like even in politics of, of one side cooperating with the other as they really are putting um, meat on the muscle, so to speak, of, of doing what's best for all of society, you know, and we have to trust God that he's working in everyone's life from both sides of the aisle and opposing sides to help bring people together to focus on what can we do to minimize government intrusion and regulations to streamline the process of delivering healing, comfort, care, uh, emergency aid where it's needed in many countries around the world? I love the videos. You've probably all seen them about the Italians singing from the balconies. Yeah, that's awesome. And worshiping the Lord and singing releasing to their life. neighbors. Yes. They're releasing life. It is. But, but, you know, I'm so grateful that for the president. I'm so grateful for everything that's happening. But we cannot look to government. No. Nope. You know, we, we've got to look to the Lord. That's right. And so um, I think I think that's the, the place where um, we're going to see divine turnaround. Right. And remember in Isaiah, it talks, I think, in 55 about that the, the, king, the, the mantle of government is placed upon Jesus' head. Yeah. On his shoulders. Yeah. And he is the source of all governing truth and righteousness and truth. That's right. And to continue to look to the Lord, pray for our governments, where whatever country you live in, pray for your leaders, pray for your enemies even, but the Lord is our source. That's right. And he's our all in all, all the time, yeah. not even in bad times or crisis like we're in now, but also for all eternity. And with all the, the negativity, with all the the interference that's being released, the Lord does sit in the heavens and he laughs at his enemies. And so we can, we can just be seated in that place with the Lord and just release his joy at this time. And and what is there to be joyful about? I mean, just getting up in the morning is a, is, is a thing to celebrate. Really? Getting up and um, being able to um, spend the time and just join the Lord at work at whatever he's doing. So that's, that's the other thing I want to encourage everybody to do is to just get up every day and join the Lord at whatever he's doing, whether it's with the kids or the family or, yeah. the, or um, just loving on people on the phone or on the internet yeah. um, and releasing the life of God is really crucial right now. Amen. I'm reminded of uh, Bob Jones, the great prophet. Uh, he was a good friend of ours and of many of you too, I'm sure. And uh, he had a great sense of humor. And he shared several times about he gets up in the morning and he looks in the mirror <laughs> and he says, the Lord says, oh, I love you perfectly. You're my favorite. And so tell yourself that, that you're God's favorite, because you really and truly are. And tell yourself how, how much he loves you and that you are greatly loved 
in a perfect way that he he can't love you any more than he does and he chooses not to love you any less and it's like that is something to shout about yeah. it's like wow the god of all creation says i'm his favorite and you're his favorite yes yes and you know i think i think too some people are by themselves right now mm -hmm. some people are really lonely and I, I feel like um to speak to that to say that you're not alone with you're with the lord he's there with you and um and he's filling up your home with his presence as you begin to worship him you know george if anything would happen to the internet that we wouldn't be able to connect right. even for a short period of time mm -hmm. that nobody should be fearful and think that this you know this is the end i feel like there's uh, Rodney Howard Brown has some good words on that too. Mm -hmm. That the thing is that what you always have to do is remember that we're not alone, that the Lord is here with us, yes. and that we need to go and get His heart on the matter, no matter how fearful it looks. Right. We we just want to we want to encourage you press in, get the heart of God on the matter for your situation. Yes. Does it look desperate? Well, it's not desperate to the Lord, right? And so we just press in and we just ask the Lord what. What do we need to understand Amen. here? And we tell fear, we tell fear, you're going to bend your knee to the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. You have to because speak it, it out. Yeah, you got to speak it out. You got to declare that thing. Say, I'm not putting up with this. You've got to get out of here. And I, I, I'm asking for the fullness of the Spirit of God Amen. to be in my home and to be where I go. Amen. Amen. Really. And I want to uh, just mention here, too, if any of you are, are alone, Wherever you are, you can email us or oh, yeah. contact us, and we'll have one of our staff or leaders or our team call you up and to pray with you, to chat with you some. And so you'll see our email on the bottom of the screen. So please contact us. We're here yeah. for you. There's no a reason or excuse to be totally alone. If you need someone to talk to, just call us. We have a, a prayer line. I'll put that number up there. It's 704-225-3927. Uh, You'll see it on the screen, and you can call if no one answers. Just leave a message, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. We are here for you, and we know that some are isolated. Some may feel lonely, but there's no reason to be all alone. No, there's no during reason. this time. No, and um, allow the Lord to to break th break you in those mm -hmm. some areas. So sometimes we're we're some of us are in a place where you feel like God you're just being your your things are being dealt with, mm -hmm. right? And God is breaking you. Well, allow the Lord to do that thing in you. And so then as you're agreeing with him, this is not something that I'm going to declare I'm going to have a steak dinner right here now. No, cuz some people feel like that that's a name it and claim it thing. This is not that. This no. is that place of um, where you become real with the Lord. Yes. And some of us need to understand that. This is that place where I have to be real with Him and I have to let myself be open that He could come in and fill it up and begin to change my life too. Really? To show me what's most important. But He does and He will give us the desires of our heart. He does. Right? You know, and, and Mark is, talks about in um, for chapter 11 about what things soever we desire when we pray, believe that we shall have them and we will receive them. And the word talks about anything that we pray, if it lines up with Father's perfect will, Jesus is our high priest and our chief intercessor, interceding on our behalf, on your behalf, night and day before our Father God, that He those things will be done. And so we can speak that. You know, and, and the scripture talks about, I think it's in John, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so let your heart be abounding in uh, praise and thanksgiving Amen. to the Lord. And then declaring those things like, no plague shall come upon my house or my family, uh, that we will prosper. Jeremiah 29, 11, yeah. the thoughts that the Lord has for me are good, that we would prosper. And even as our soul prospers. And you speak those words, it does create a vibrational yes. harmony with the harmony of heaven, and it disturbs the spiritual atmosphere, and it can destroy the works of the enemy. So the doubt and the negativity, the uncertainty of the times, any fear, you know, that perfect love casts out That's all right. fear. And as you just speak those words, even by faith, sometimes I have to speak and declare things by faith. Right. It's like I may be feeling one way, but it doesn't have to do with emotions. You know, That's faith right. is not emotions or feeling. It is declaring the word of the Lord and his purposes and his plans yeah. that allows me to overcome, Amen. as we all can, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And with Passover coming up, this is a great time 
to even today to start and do it every few days or every day as the Lord leads you to anoint your doorposts. Yeah. Like Passover, that the That's that the great. enemy of Pharaoh's uh, people in Egypt, um, they didn't know what the blood could do right. or what the the blood of the Passover lamb could do in their life. But those um, Hebrews that were there that did that, they were spared death and destruction. Right. And so you can anoint your oils with anointing oil over your doors and windows. Uh, put a stick on the in the ground with your favorite scriptures on it and say, devil, you will not have my home and my family. And you can do these faith acts um, even when you don't feel like it. So don't wait till you're in a good mood. Do it right. now because we all need it to get closer and declare the word of the Lord in due season because it's now. That's right. I, you know, I agree with you 100% on all that. But um, I, I was seeing a while back that um, the angel that was standing at the threshing floor with David and because David numbered uh, Israel, and um, but it did stop. And mm -hmm. I, I was seeing that actually. And I feel like that that the body is in a place of repentance right now and that they're, the Lord is going to stop that. But you, you said, he said something really profound. You were talking about, first of all, you, I'm going to connect some thoughts because you mm -hmm. talked about Thanksgiving and you talked about uh, declaring things. And so I'm, I'm still stuck on that. But you're, you know, I think sometimes when we're in fear and we don't know what to say, starting with either Thanksgiving or the Psalms, mm -hmm. And began to speaking those things because David knew how to do it. He poured out his complaint and then he gave praise. He poured out his complaint and gave yes. praise. And so I think, I think that is really most powerful. And I think if you don't know what to do or what to begin to fill the airwaves with, go through your house, either pray in the spirit, which is awesome, mm -hmm. uh, begin to fill the airwaves with your with the with your in the spirit fill the airwaves with worship mm -hmm. fill the airwaves with psalms fill the airwaves with a grateful heart and every time you're tempted because you said it you know every time you're tempted to speak oh woe is me and i'll begin to flip and say no but god lord i'm pouring out my complaint but you said and and begin to really? say that thing yes and so as we're talking um as we're talking I do. I do see the Lord just really, really laughing. He's the one that can turn the tables I, I on any him. situation. Yeah. He can turn the tables around. He can change a nation in a day. Yeah. He's changed many of our lives in an instant when we have repented of our sins and we received Jesus into heart. I remember that day and it's like, just like it's so fresh of like, wow, God, you are real. All things are possible. To them who believe. And George, as you're as you're talking, I just feel the I see the Lord just laughing. I really do. I mean, He's not laughing at us, but at the enemy. I just so um, you know, I we just we just release that joy of the yes. Lord right now because I just feel like it's it's right here too. I just Lord, we just thank you for your joy. Amen. <laughs> Lord, we just thank you for your joy. It's the joy of the Lord, uh, Father. We thank you for your joy being released into your beloved right now, God. No matter what happens, Lord, it is your joy. It is yes. kingdom, God. So, Father, we thank you for your joy that yes. is being released. Yes. And Father, uh, it, Father, it's not that you're laughing at the situation or anybody, but it is the joy of the Lord. So, Father, we thank you for that. Yes. That they would be able, each person would just receive it, Lord, as almost as your joy. encounter it, that it would be almost like they would get uh, inebriated, like just from the feeling yes. of the Lord right now. Father, we like just Like in Acts, it that. says uh, the men were, were drunk by nine, <laughs> and Peter said, these are not drunk as you suppose. That's right. That's right. <laughs> it's on the new wine of the Spirit. And that reminds me of uh, Hebrews 12, 2. <laughs> Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, <laughs> despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of the Father. Amen. And about 20 years ago or 18 years ago, the Lord was giving me revelation about that scripture that we all know the joy of the Lord is your strength. And he said, my people are going to discover what that really means. Amen. It's not what many have thought or what many have been taught. <laughs> But there's a revelation of that's a reality that's right. by faith of that joy that sets before us of the resurrection life <laughs> that we can see beyond our own grave. We can see beyond uh, Jesus in the tomb and that resurrection life of rising up that it says, death, where is your sting? 
<laughs> it's nothing to not fear our death. Mm -hmm. And whatever happens, if we die, we're just absent from the body and mm -hmm. present with the Lord. Right. We can rejoice. And again, I say rejoice <laughs> in all things because of, of what he's done for us, of this completed mm -hmm. work on the cross. So just Amen. receive Amen. all that he created you for mm -hmm. and what a great future in eternity that we have. Amen. Amen. Bless you guys. Bless you. <laughs> See you soon. Drink some of that new wine. <laughs>